Wait till you see what we've got for you. But first, we're going to show you this gorgeous video right here. Chicago's longest running lights festival, the Brookfield Zoo's 38th annual Holiday Magic, kicks off tonight. Filled with family friendly activities across the entire zoo, featuring 1 million LED lights, something you definitely don't want to miss. Joining us here this morning is zoo curator Tim Sullivan with a preview of the season's events. Thanks for coming in. Good, good to be here. Thank you very much for having us. So when it comes to the lights, what can people expect? I just mentioned a million lights, but really to see it in person is quite oh, something. Oh, it is, yeah. That's, we stopped counting at a million. Every <laughs> year since then, we reached that we've been building up on it. And you saw on the, on the roll we just showed you that wonderful 600-foot tunnel mm. of LED lights that go are synchronized to music, and it's like being in a dreamland. It's really, really cool. Mm. And so that's one of our new additions. And of course, there's all the old favorites, like our 41-foot talking tree. Oh. Of course, you know, Santa and Mrs. Claus will be there for the kids, so to make sure you go out there and vi visit and uh, ask for your favorite toy coming this season. It really is stunning. So what are some of the special events that some of the children and their parents can take part in too? Well, of course, we have ice carving, of course, at, and we have magicians. Uh, if you want to make it down to our Riverside room, they've got a beautiful train set down there. If, you, if kids love trains, it's just amazing setup that they have there. Uh, storytellers are caroling to the animals. There's just so many things to do. It's become quite a tradition here in Chicago. 38 years has developed a, quite a following at, at, over those time. And I'm kind of doing a tease here. I'm saving the best for last, but there is also the Hamill family play zoo. So the parents and their kids can take part in seeing firsthand and touching some of the animals. Tell oh, us about the animals. Of course, all of our there. touchables. Some you have a uh, mammal like a guinea pig or a rabbit or a, a snake. All those animals are out there. You could be surprised when you come in. You go back an hour later, a new animal will be out, come up and play with. Yeah. Well, I'm ready to play with this sloth. <laughs> we have Elsie, the two toed sloth. Right, yes. Paul's coming in with Elsie. It's Elsie. an amazing animal. Uh, sloths are, live in Central and South America. Uh, they get their well, name because they us. do. Yeah, so come on in, Paul. Elsie. She's beautiful, right? <laughs> yeah, she, dro she just dropped her corn. Right. This is a bit of a wow. breakfast for her. There yeah, we they're, go. they're omnivores, so they eat lots of vegetation, of course. Look at those claws. Yes, yeah, so that's, a, that's the, get their name with the two toed sloth. They have right. three toes in the back, but the two toed in front is what they do. This animal spends its entire of its life upside down. With the exception of every one or two weeks, they come off the trees to go poopy on the ground and then <laughs> back up to the tree it's again. It's all that slow. It is but that slow. you were sharing with me something incredibly interesting that we all know them as super slow, but they're not that slow when it comes to some danger, right? Defending themselves, yeah. They can be a prey animal to uh, anaconda, jaguar, ocelot. So when they have to defend themselves, they can be pretty vicious with those claws and uh, making themselves known. And those claws are unbelievable. They look like a partial handcuff. They're so <laughs> thick. They're so big. Yeah, they're fantastic animals. Uh, this animal, uh, another kind of interesting thing is it can swim. Uh, really? So if it's on the ground, sometimes it moves, but if there's a river in the way, it'll get in the water and just swim across it. They're very good due to the breaststroke, actually. <laughs> really? Fast? <laughs> Not fast enough to get across. All right. And we have another special oh, of visitor. Course, we yes. have a close-up. Pepe the penguin is making it. Look at that. The close-up of Pepe. <laughs> I love him. He's so fun, and he will just walk right up to you and give you a high five. Yeah, Pepe is an amazing, he's a humble penguin. Uh, most people don't realize this, but there are no penguins north of the equator. They're all in South America and, yeah, and, and down south in Antarctica. Uh, these animals are, live in the Chilean and uh, Patagonia, oh, coast down there on the south side, on the Pacific side of the South America. Thank you, I got a high five. You did, yeah, she's, that's a <laughs> greeting that you get. You've been very fortunate to get that. She's, oh my goodness. Not too many people get that greeting. <laughs> too sweet. Yeah, of course they eat fish. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't fly, but they fly underwater. They're, those flippers they have are great. They can reach speeds over 20 miles an hour, hunting fish in the Humboldt Current. That's where they get their name from. Uh, they make their life in the outcroppings of the western <laughs> coast of of Chile and Peru, uh, where they'll dig out a nest or live in the guano there, because there's you know several feet of uh, built up poop back there, and that's <laughs> a great place to, to raise your young, according to if you're a penguin. You know, quick question before we run out of time, because I found this fascinating, touching Pepe. Like silk, is that what helps them glide through the water right, like right. that? Right, right. All their fe it's still feathers, but it's, it's, it's facing backwards, so it's almost yes. like lifting that smooth flow, so they can reach those high speeds we talked about. Pepe really is something. Just a <laughs> ham for the camera there, Pepe. Oh, she's wonderful. I love her. And is that the same um, penguin that makes the artwork with the cards that you can get from the Brookfield Zoo? They can, yes. Right? They, they, they learn how to walk through the right paints and put it in the, right. just the right spot on the canvas. Perfect. <laughs> Tim, thank you so much for coming in. Tim Sullivan, the curator of the Brookfield Zoo and our special guest, thank you as well. We're going to have more information on Holiday Magic. Again, it begins tonight and continues through all of the weekends in December. You can also check it out from December 26th through the 31st.